In my Waterhouse project, which I've just recently completed, I thought I'd do a little behind the scenes and a time lapse of my rough process for how I did something like this. So I started out with blocking out the scene just with using cubes, just kind of basic blocking out, which I always do when I'm starting a scene. So it's just get the general arrangement of the render and looking at the proportions of the spaces. Something that I kind of focus on here is just getting the general sizes of the rooms right. And I'm just focusing on that 2.7 ceiling height, um, 2.7 meters. And then um, this kind of started out being a dining room arrangement. Um, but later on, I changed this to be a, um, a living room and it just felt better for the render. And I was just getting in the kind of context there with the roofing and everything like that. Um, and then I just kind of started out getting some general um, window kind of geometry in there just to get an idea early on on um, yeah where the window would be and what that would look like in the composition of the render. And I do use quite a lot of booleans quite early on in the project. Um, I didn't go into a lot of detail, this was kind of the only element at the first stage where I um, actually kind of did a lot of detailing because it's um, quite an important part of this design as you'll see later. The um, idea of the design was really to showcase kind of a, um, a dining room looking out towards a water feature um, and it's kind of quite a almost a art gallery or museum feeling to it and so then I looked at what the lighting might be doing and I did end up changing this later on but this is just kind of to get a feel of the space and I was just looking initially at what that composition might look like with some brick materials and I was just UV mapping and using the Texel Density plugin, which um, I use a lot. And then I just started kind of getting some flooring in there with the flooring generator. Um, I use that plugin a lot to get really, really good um, tile free flooring, which actually comes with all the geometry and everything. There's a link in the description for that. And then the next step in this process was to just make a a um, glass shader, which um, you can check out the node setup in um, in the actual behind the scenes full kind of course that I did. Um, but it uses light paths. It's kind of a little bit more complicated than the normal kind of glass shader that you'd use. And the reason being is because I just find this allows light to come in, th pass through glass better. And it just has a slightly better result. So you can see as soon as you add glass to the window, it just kind of really helps to show what the end result might look like. And then I was just getting in glazing millions just to kind of add a little bit of that black metal color to it and then I was just making a pretty standard metal BSDF and that's kind of how that started out looking the next step was to create water and that was um, probably a little bit more challenging as a shader than the glass one it's also a mix of transparent BSDFs and volume absorption. And I also um, use caustics for this, um, for this setup as well. And you're also mixing in a glass BSDF into that as well. And then I added a ocean modifier 
to the end result and just it, I, it wasn't very powerful because it's quite a um, I wanted more of a serene kind of environment with not a lot of waviness but it's just kind of to add that little 10% more bit of detail and you don't actually end up seeing the caustics because of the angle that you see the the water on you just see like a nice reflection but Every little bit of realism and physical geometry, uh, you know, physical lighting kind of helps to all come together and make a really good result. Then I was just adding some concrete just to kind of flesh out the scene. And then the, the uh, next stage was just adding some procedural battens to the ceiling. And I um, have quite a quite a good setup for that you can actually buy this um this scene i've kind of replaced a few bits and pieces um and actually made a few things myself just to be able to sell it but um you'll be able to access like the the procedural batten ceiling and um a few other bits and pieces so you can check that out um but this is just kind of my process for using geometry nodes and then randomly displacing the texture as well as brightening and darkening it and I just think it's a a really cool way to use blender and kind of procedural texturing together with real textures so it's just kind of like trying to find that good balance of color and variation there which does take a while The next stage was just adding in the couches um, and I used the 3D Shaker finishing pack with that um, and I just find this stuff is so good. Very, very high quality. There's a link in the description where you can find those and there's just a heap, heap of stuff in their pack. Um, in the one that I, in the scene that I'm selling, I couldn't actually, you know, obviously I can't sell someone else's work so I kind of remodeled the couch um, but yeah, definitely 3D Shaker has super high quality furniture. The next step was just adding displacement to the bricks. And from that distance, you don't notice it too much, but it does still kind of overall add up to create that last, you know, 10% of realism that you wouldn't normally get. So I normally just subdivide a plane a lot, and I don't generally use the subdivision modifiers because... I find the um, manually subdividing just has a better result for some reason. The next step was to add in some trees and I actually use the 3D Shaker tree pack um, which is just really really good. I've used this stuff for ages. You can also find that in the description. And for the one that I sell um, I made some trees. So that process of kind of rotating and moving trees to kind of guide the light and sometimes soften it and dapple the light, that's something that I do quite a lot in my scenes and I just find it really helps to add a little bit of life to the scene. You know, you're, whenever you see nature, vegetation, I feel like the eye just notices it and it just kind of, it's a, it, it's a little bit more attractive to the eyes, so I just try to get, bring as much granary in as I possibly can. And that's kind of the um, end result within Blender. And then I just started working on the post-production in Photoshop, just starting with the values. So I normally make it black and white using the Windows color filter. And then the next stage is to just refine that and going back into full color mode before editing the saturation and then the colors these already these colors were pretty pretty good um i was just kind of refining the this the, the primary colors in the scene which is like the orangey beige and the green and then just adding a little bit of grain masking out that couch light and that's pretty much it so i hope you found this useful um, make sure to check out the scene on blender marketplace and my Instagram at Oliver Higgins Architecture. And you can also follow my Discord. There's a link in the description and you can share your work and get feedback from me and the community. So thanks for watching.